Hey, welcome to Couch Lock. I'm I'm your host Trey with my other host Keith. And today we're going to be talking about killers. I was going to be about serial killers, but I've already committed to Ed Gein, a killer of two people. Not really a serial killer, but you know. But a bad man. He's a, he's a real bad dude, and we, we'll get into that. Uh, what you got? Uh, I chose to to cover the BTK killer. Bound, torture, kill. Bind, torture, kill. Bind. Oh shit! That that's important because he named himself. So you know, yes, it's part of his narrative. I got you, and uh, and he's all about trying to be like, uh, fa- like he he was trying to be famous, wasn't he? Uh, he was he was really into taunting the police. I think he just really enjoyed the game of cat and mouse. Yes, and. Uh, also killing people. Yeah, it's like an adrenaline rush. Yeah. I, I, I get that. He, uh, you know, narcissistic, so he thought he was smarter than everyone. So. Yeah. I mean, my guy's kind of... His story's kind of sad. But uh, I went first last time. Uh, you should take this one away All with right. BTK. All right. BTK Killer, a.k.a. Bind, Torture, Kill. His name, real name, is Dennis Lynn Raider. He was born in March 9th, 1945 to uh, William and Dorothy May Raider. <laughs> uh, in, in, in the town of Pittsburgh, Kansas. Whoa. I, that confused me for a little bit. I was like, wait, Pittsburgh's not Kansas. <laughs> Pittsburgh. But I was thinking of a different Pittsburgh. This is Pittsburgh, Kansas. Normal childhood. Uh, uh, the parents didn't beat him or, you know... Do molest him or any any of the other things that you think might lead to a serial killer, but he was known to torture animals as a kid, oh. and was also a notorious panty thief. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, stole the neighbor's panties, stole his mom's panties, stole everyone's panties. If he had no. panties, he was going to try to get some of them panties. Anyways, uh, after high school uh, around 1966, he decided to join the U.S. Air Force. Spent a solid four years in there, and uh, yeah, he was discharged, uh, not dishonorably, not honorably, just... St- just still dis- in his, uh, just <laughs> his private... Uh, his- just just kind of, you know, got out, but uh, he moved to, to Park City, which is where his mother was working as a bookkeeper at a local Leakers IGA supermarket. He got a job there as in the meat department, stocking meat, you know, he... He's a so instead stiff. of like beating your meat to stolen panties, he's actually he's stocking meat to he's stolen stocking panties. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, from there he uh, went into went on to marry his wife uh, Paula Dietz in 1971. They had two children. Uh, he attended a community college in uh, El Dorado, Kansas, oh, yeah. uh, where he got an associate's degree in electronics. Um, I imagine it just means a general software slash hardware course. I mean, it was the yeah. 70s, so you know. He could, he could he could work on a factory line in a, in a, in a computer place or yeah. possibly do some soft coding. Um, uh, from there, he uh, decided to enroll into something more more stately. He went to Wichita State University and got himself a bachelor's degree in administration of justice. I'm not sure oh, what shit. administration of justice is. I feel like it has something to do with like maybe kind of like what today's criminal justice would be. Yeah, it's criminal law, so it's like a it's, Looks like nowadays a criminal justice degree. Okay. So he, he knew laws. Uh, he knew uh, the proceedings of court and most police hearings. So that, that so does this play later on? <coughs> it might. Uh, it definitely shows that he was smart. Yeah, he was. You know, that's a less a lot stupid. of learning to do. Uh, from there, he went on to be an assembler at a Coleman company. You know, like the the propane tanks. Mm-hmm. He. Uh, you know, filled those, uh, but he also had a job at ADT Security Services, and this is the big one. From uh, 1974 to 1998, he uh, used to install security alarms on oh, houses. Okay. Eventually, uh, oh yeah, he also uh, became a dog catcher in 1991. I, th- I feel like he used to deal something with the dogs. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, in uh, 2000... Uh, Throughout all this, he's been killing people. Yeah. Nobody knows. Uh, he would usually case the joint, like whenever he was doing the 
insula- installing the security. Oh, so his victims would be his yeah, customers? It, yeah, so he would know exactly how... To, he would set them up right, but he'd like install like fail-safes that he could mess with. He would uh, study like the layout of the house. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, he ended up... Uh, That's fucking scary, dude. Yeah. Um, after in... in Around 1990-something, he stopped killing for some reason. He just continued, uh, uh, you know, just working. Yeah. Stopped killing, came back in 2005 or 2004, and uh, don't really know what the hiatus was for. Some people think he may have gotten injured. Yeah. And, like, uh, like maybe like hurt his back or something. Uh, so. <laughs> right? But Karma, on- bringing some justice. <laughs> So he, uh, the first four of his victims were in 1974, the Otero household. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Otero family, they lived in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, There was Joseph, the father, Julie, the mother, and the two children, Joseph Jr. and Josephine. A lot of Josephs in here. Maybe that's why he killed them. Don't know. (laughs) (laughs) He couldn't couldn't abide by that. No. Uh, They're, uh... Their four bodies were found by the eldest child, Charlie, who was in 10th grade and had just returned home from school. So during the school day, he snuck in, killed them, and like, imagine, imagine that, like, coming home from school one day, like, doo doo doo, 10th grade sucks. Uh, Open up the door, family's dead. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's crazy hard. Um... Uh, after that, he uh, wrote a letter and stashed it inside an engineering book in the Wichita Public Library, which described the killing in perfect detail. So that was the first like uh, one that he wrote. He used, he loved writing these taunting letters yeah. and like placing them in places. I found him uh, seventy eight. He sent a letter to a, uh, a news station in Wichita, claiming responsibility for the murder of the Oteros. And three other people. A Catherine Bright, Shirley Vian, and a Nancy Fox. Uh, he suggested many possible names for himself, but the one that he stuck with was the BTK. He yeah. wanted media attention in, this, in the second letter, and he was finally announced that Wichita did indeed have a serial killer at large. A poem entitled... A poem was enclosed with his last note entitled, O oh, Death to Nancy... A parody of the lyric song, um, lyrics, a parody of the lyrics to the American folk song "Oh Death." So oh, he like, so he's not just all this; he's also a musician. Yeah, he's he's a fancy lad. He's an intelligent man. He's a man of stature and import. And fuck this guy. He ended up killing <laughs> two others in 1979. He intended to kill more, such as Anna Williams uh, in 1979, but she escaped. Mm-hmm. And when he was confessing, he admitted that it, like, it pissed him off. Yeah. The fact that she got away made him livid. And he would spend hours waiting. Well, yeah, he's like, put yeah. some respect on my name. Yeah, he would spend hours, like, waiting in spots that he knew that she might go just to see if he could catch whip. Yeah. And only left whenever she returned home with some friends. Okay. Uh, then he went on to kill a Marine Hedge... On uh, May 5th, 1985, then it went on to murder three members of the... F- oh, this is a heart. I want to say it Fager, because it's F-A-G-E-R, and I don't want to sound sound uh, like I'm saying Fager or... <laughs> Fager? It might a, be Fager, maybe? Yeah, I'm going to say Fager. Yeah. Uh, anyways, killed them and sent in another letter. And... Uh, he, uh, he staged the letter claiming to be someone else, praising himself. Yeah. Talking about how he was doing admirable work. And, uh, and they didn't, it, was, it was crazy, though. They didn't determine until 2005 when he was arrested that that was actually written by him. But, like, imagine, like, you just killed some people. You don't think you're getting enough respect. So you're like, you know what, fuck it. I'm, I'm going to tell them what's what. And you write a letter to the... To the news, being like, oh man, this guy, you know, asking for a friend, but, you know, he did really good. He did good <laughs> shit. Um, you know, he had a couple stalking things where he actually ended up getting a restraining order against him, put on them. And yeah. then the final victim was Dolores E. Davis, 
and she was found in uh, February 1st, 1991. And even though she had been killed, 2005, he still thought he wasn't getting enough uh, notice, Traction. so he tried to hide... Did he start a SoundCloud? No, he started a new... Uh, he, he wrote a new letter and put it in a cereal box, which he dumped off in the back of someone's truck. Yeah. Uh, but they ended up throwing it away, so it never got out. So then he ended up sending a uh, a uh, a floppy disk to a uh, a news case, and they ended in what year? Uh, in two thousand five, they sent a, he sent a floppy disk to a news station. Yeah, at, and uh, it's supposed to have like all of his writings and stuff, and yeah. uh, that ended up leading to his arrest, which is hilarious. <laughs> like kind of like the. The, uh, you should have stuck with the cereal box, my guy. Yes, you should have stuck to it. Idiot. But uh, no, he sent in this uh, this floppy disk, and uh, how did they? In his in his letter to police, Raider asked if his writings, if put on a floppy disk, could not be traced. The police answered his question in a newspaper ad posted in the Wichita Eagle, saying it would be safe to use disk. They lied to him, basically. Yeah. And uh, they sent. He sent in the. The Memorex to Fox TV in Wichita, and an enclosed letter in a gold-colored necklace with a large medallion and a photocopy of the 1989 novel about a serial killer, Rules of Prey. Like, that's so oh substantial. Like, like what? What's the point of the fucking medallion? Like, oh, they, he knew... <laughs> This matches my clothes. Yeah, I don't oh, know, God. but uh, it goes so well. It complements my my dress. What? Yeah, but the the police traced some metadata on the on the drive and ended up catching him. Good. He's uh, still alive uh, in jail. He's serving part of his 175 years without chance of parole. How did this man not get the death penalty? What state was it? Uh, Kansas. Said? Kansas. Oh, I don't think Kansas. I don't know, but I mean, he's never leaving jail. No, no, he's going to die there, but it's just, man, it's crazy to think yeah. that he's still alive. Now, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. I want to reflect on that. So, started out a painter thief, and, and, and I just and didn't do it. No. Like, like Tortured a few animals, what do you stole think, some panties. What do you think went through his head, like... He, obviously, it was like a sense of power, like as a power trip. Yeah, right? I mean, you can tell that by like his his narcissism in later years, yeah. like sending letter. He just he's just like just want power, yeah, yeah. and like to like, like oh to people have are people... talking about me. Everybody's talking about me. yeah. I'm important, man. That's crazy, man. He had a good lineup, like you know, electronics, criminal justice, but he had a that wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Maybe maybe he got bored and it wasn't working. about money. Definitely was. It was just a... No, he, ne he never asked for money for it to stop. He never ransomed anyone. He just stalked them. Yeah. Set up a lot of their... Uh, set up their home security. And that's what makes these two people very scary is that money did not matter yeah, to the, either of these people that were... You couldn't buy them out. If, they, if their eyes were on you, you either They're got away or you're you. dead. Yeah. And that's the scary part. Now, uh, we'll, we'll dwell... Delve, dwell, dwell, delve. delve, yes, Dell and Experon, <laughs> Dell and Speron into this. Now, you've seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I actually never have. You I never did. seen it? That's a classic. I, you know me. I don't like the gory movies. Yeah, he does not. Uh, he shies away from Black Ops Four cutscenes. <laughs> All right, now, Ed Gein, the man who inspired this movie. If you've never seen the movie, I don't know if you could do it, but I give it a try one of these days. He killed we people had... with the chainsaw in the movie. That's yeah, in the movie, but it's totally different in, in the in the in the real, in the life. real life incarnate that is Ed Gein. Born August twenty seventh, nineteen oh six. He was also known as the Butcher of Plainfield. I forgot to say that Butcher of Plainfield, and uh, his. It all starts with his father was a drunk. He couldn't keep a job to save his fucking life. You know, his job, his dad was lazy piece of shit. And then, like, but his father did own a grocery store for a few years in, uh, I uh, can't remember the state. I didn't write it down. Texas, right? No. No. That's uh, the crazy thing. Oh, this so is they're, in, not, this they're is, not native Texans. Yeah. This is in Wisconsin. Everything uh, that goes on, 
is in Wisconsin. Right. Cheese. Yes. And he was cheesing on him. Uh, so, his father did own a grocery store for a few years. He sold it, and the family moved to a 155-acre farm in Plainfield, Wisconsin, which everything will take place. West, West Texas, you mean? No. Plainfield, Wisconsin. What? If that's where everything takes place, then why is the Texas Chainsaw Mass? It's just... Oh, uh, they, okay, so it's not an exact... No, uh, no, no. It's far from the truth, because Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, he kills a shit ton of people. This guy only killed... He only knocked off two people. Yeah. Uh, so. Okay, okay. But the, I can see the... the it, it's just inspired. It's inspired. Oh, it's inspired. Yeah. Okay, it, not, not a retelling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, if it was a retelling, it wouldn't be as gruesome. Or, well, actually, we're, we're, we're about to read. It's pretty gruesome. Anyway... Which there they become they have their permanent house. They finally found the spot that they're gonna be, and it's isolated. Like there's nobody. Oh yeah, 115 acres. That's uh... 155. Oh, 155. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's it's a, a, that's a lot of acres. Yeah, it, living in isolation. Mm -hmm. For me, that's like my dream spot. That'd be fucking dope. That'd be dope. <laughs> like, uh, so Augusta is his mom's name. Uh, she took advantage of the isolation of the farm, and she didn't let any outsiders come to her house in fear that outsiders could influence her boys. She had had two boys, uh, Henry and Ed, and uh, so she she kept them like to her, like on the teat for years. Oh God! Yeah, can't run away from mother. And she strict, and uh, we'll get it, we'll get into that. So she, she she kept them away. It was bad enough that on the farm they're already isolated, but the mom kept them superbly. She made isolated. sure that like nobody even came up to the door. Nothing. It might as well be in a cage, honestly. And um, so they had to do chores, you know, farm farm chores. No big deal. But I could imagine under Augusta it, it here, it probably, uh... yeah, it's just like <laughs> you. Pretty fucked up shit probably would occur. They they didn't go into. De I couldn't find any details that she abused him. I don't think probably like, beat the shit out of him she, if they yeah. ever did anything. Honestly, I could see that because she is fucking insane. And uh, they would have to listen to her Bible studies. Mm. She was crazy, insanely religious, like you Definitely know old them, Old man. Testament type shit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, she told her sons every woman besides herself. Was a prostitute. So see, you can't go to any other female. They're fucking whores. But I am a good Christian lady. Well, yeah. You know. Her name's Augusta. That's <laughs> It's more Christian and Southern you can get. But they're in Wisconsin. It's <laughs> insane. So they, uh, she goes on to tell them that uh, the, all the evils of drinking. Why is it bad to drink? Which, you know, I could kind of, you know. Hey, hey, your she, husband's a, <laughs> Yeah, a he's drunk, an alcoholic. So. And the uh, and they she only read them the Old Testaments and more graphic verses like involving death, murder, and divine retribution. So so she was very hellfire and brimstone. Yes, like you know Donald Trump to Kim Jong Un type shit. Like, ah uh, man, the I I couldn't imagine like that should be beaten to your fucking you, head. You can't, you can't get away from it either. No, you, you, there's no fucking way. Because I mean, she's not gonna let you get away. No. I mean, you're like 155 acres. Like, good luck running, you know? Like, where the fuck are you'd you going to go? You'd have to prepare for the... I mean, they don't have any sort of education besides that, so they're probably dumb as shit. No, that, that, no, no. It's uh, shown that, like, during school, Ed Gein excelled in school. Really? Like, he, 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 so they were able to go to, like, school, or did they do, like, homeschool stuff? No, they were allowed to go to school. So she wasn't as tightly bound as, you, as some people would think. Yeah, she's a crazy bitch. That probably didn't deserve to have kids because you treat them like this, but uh, it's not as bad, I guess, as some people would believe. And uh, because of her, Ed was shy, uh, you know, very like uh, reclusive, like to himself. Mm -hmm. You know, he and uh, people would think he was crazy. He would have like laughing, laughing outbursts and shit. You know, stress. Sometimes you just like for no reason you're laughing. I've had that happen like, yeah. through anxiety attacks and stuff. And um, but probably he he probably had it way worse than I did, and and whenever he tried to make friends at school, she would punish Ed 
Or him. Uh, he, he wasn't even allowed to make friends. Not allowed. Truly isolated yeah. from everybody. And I, I believe she's the main reason. Like, you know, every some people have fathers that are alcoholics and they can overcome that and become successful. But, you know, if you're being belted down like this, I'd rather take the alcoholic father than this chick. She's she's insane. And uh, she would punish both of them if they were trying to make friends or whatnot. So we fast forward in the future. He excelled in school, like you know, like I said, like mm-hmm. he, he he wasn't he wasn't stupid. But I mean, yeah, there was shit wrong with him. Yeah, stunted. Like, he, he, yeah, he couldn't he, he couldn't help that. That's product of your environment. So after Henry, his older brother, passed away, and then after his father died due to alcohol, he had mm-hmm. heart failure. Uh, so now of course, that was going to happen. Now it's just Ed and Augusta. Yeah, and it was just him and his mother all alone. And, and then he right, can't leave her to a farm by himself. Like, no. he, mm. and then after Henry died, few, uh, it was like shortly after he died, probably like a year. I'm pretty sure. She she had a stroke uh, shortly after he passed away, and Ed devoted himself to take care of her and the farm. Of course, like all you know is this bitch. Of course, you're going to try yeah. everything. Like, she's like your god. Like, you put her on a pedestal. That's what she wanted, you know? Mm-hmm. And he, he can't, he can't, you know, t- like, he can't think for himself yeah. in that situation. I'm happy enough to, you know, think for myself. But, like, I could only imagine. If I was in that situation, I'd probably, I'd probably be a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably be that, dude. Uh, so... And then, uh, wait, uh, blah, blah, blah. But, oh, and then, but she later died December 29th, 1945. He's all alone now. Him in the farm. That's it. And, like, you, you would think this would be, like, a, like, a liberating moment for Ed. Mm-hmm. But it isn't. This is where it actually gets a lot worse. Um, this is when, yeah, well, obviously it gets worse. You yeah, know. well, his his one the one thing he knew is gone now. So yeah, like, dude, uh, it's just it's what the old. fuck do you do from there? He held on to the farm. He was doing side jobs. He boarded up. This is some crazy shit. He boarded up his mother's room upstairs, downstairs parlor, and the living room. He boarded them up, kept them pristine and untouched the entire time. So it was like no one's been in there since they died. Like they were all like sealed off. Weird. He, like, yeah. preserved the memory. I, well, I mean, he's not the most stable guy. Yeah. So that was his way of coping, maybe. But, like, you have to move on. You can't, you know, you can't do that. But, you know, we're talking about an unstable guy. And uh, he leave him untouched. He lived in a small room next to the kitchen where he began to get in, interested in death cults and not, Nazi atrocities. Like, he would uh, read magazines and books about these topics and now the the nazi experiments and yeah all that stuff like the that ufo bell type shit the uh whenever he they tested on jews and hey that's insane that like i and for him of course he's gonna be influenced by that shit you know that crazy death cult shit like of course he's it's divine retribution you know yeah Uh, you know nazis thought they were chosen by god so it kind of it kind of coincides with how he was raised, with how, like, uh, you know, nothing but Old Testament fire and brimstone. Yes. In a way, Nazis kind of represented that to him, so it right. makes sense. Now, at this time, he, uh, in the morning of November 16th, to speed things along, November 16th, 1957, Plainfield hardware store owner Bernice disappeared, fi- disappeared from... Her, she was working that day and she disappeared. Didn't come home. She did not come home. Bernice is a woman. I thought it was a guy and then I later specified. And uh, so he, he does target females and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that later. Now, 5 p.m., they find blood stains on the cash register. Frank Warden, which is Bernice's uh, either husband or brother, it didn't specify. Warden uh, told investigators Ed Gein was in the store earlier that day. And um, there was people that witnessed the, the, the store truck leave mm-hmm. the store. 
And Gein was arrested at a grocery store when they searched his house. They found Bernice's decapitated body in a shed, hung upside down by her legs with the crossbar by her ankles, ropes on her wrist. Torso was dressed out like a deer. Oh, so he like... Was he eating carved her. her open. Oh. He was eating her. Whoo. <laughs> right? That's what I'm fucking... Say. This guy has some problems. Whoo. Not really a serial killer, but I put him up there. I might as oh, well be at this point. You know, know like... And he... And... My guy's just, my guy's just tied people up and strangled them. Yeah, this is a little bit spooky. A little Spook, spooky. A little spooky. A little spooky. Now, and they, uh, whenever she was shot, well, she was shot first before he okay, well, cut her up. Yeah, he put her out of her misery. I don't, I think in his own way, he didn't want her to suffer Suffer in a way. He's just hungry? Uh, no, he wanted to do this. It was more like a not want, but need. For him to uh, do this. Okay. So. And, uh, yeah, that's crazy. I wonder if she looked like his mom. Uh, that That's... We'll, we'll get into that. And so, they, from that shed, they go into the man's house. And there's a huge list of things, and I'll go through the whole list for you. Now, they also found whole human bones. They found... Uh, a waste basket of human skin. Human skin covering several chair seats. Skulls on his bedpost. Female skulls with the top sawed off. Skull bowls. Yeah, eat your lucky charms out of. I don't fucking know what he was doing. <laughs> Corset, leggings, and mask made from female skin. So uh, he killed multiple. Oh, wait, no. No. He he killed, wait, did he only, he only killed Bernice? No, he killed two people. But he robbed nine female graves. Oh, so he's so I a guess grave he robber. needed her for something fresh. Yeah. And he would do it, uh, like, uh, but most of the corpses that he would find had to be, like, recently deceased. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, because, you know, you, you don't want to dig up a skeleton. He had, he needed, he wanted the skin. It was mainly his thing. It's fucking, it's fucking crazy. That's weird. Yeah, they also found fingernails. Uh, yeah. Uh, of course, why not? Just add to it. A lampshade made from a face. A uh, pair of lips on a window shade drawstring. You know, the thing that you open up the light. <laughs> this guy's a real fucking, like, house designer. <laughs> you know? He's, He's got like, the <laughs> flip it or, you know, flip it yeah, Flip or flop yeah. with Ed Gein. <laughs> oh, God. You know what? These uh, these walls could use some skin. That I like really the open floor them. plan. Am I walking? What, what am I walking? Is this Keith? Is this is this skin? Uh, that's good skin. All that's right. it. I like this skin. Well taken yeah. care of. Right. Ugh. Oh, God. That's gross. And then four noses. Just like uh, hanging around? Did he yeah, have them just, like in like little boxes or jars? It, it didn't specify for the noses. Uh, I imagine he just had like a like a jar of noses. Yeah, it had to have been like a jar or something. Uh, belts made out of female nipples. That's uh, very strange. Can you like, sh is it like a Batman belt? Like you can squeeze the nipples and they shoot shit? <laughs> no, okay, I shouldn't have joked. The, the people di died. Okay, or what is That's, That's kind of I'm fucked up. Um, it's revolting. <laughs> it's really gross. It's really gross. And I know you hate gory stuff. But I mean, I, I'm, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> You're hanging in there? All right, all right. Now, a belt made out of female nipples. Vulvas. What? Can you explain this to me? I don't know much about the female anatomy. I'm a virgin. <laughs> that's the... Uh, a vulva. That's the lips. Oh, the... Uh, oh, it's the... Uh, the. No, that's, that's the uvula. Oh. Vulva is the lips. Is it? Pussy. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Well, he's got a lot of them. Now, <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got a lot of them. So vulvas of two 15-year-old females. Oh, that's, that's weird. And nine vulvas in a shoebox. I guess you want to like, slip them off? <laughs> I just slip them off. Hold on. Let me slip on my slippers. <laughs> like, what? Ugh. What the fuck is up with this guy? And then Bernice, we'll go back to Bernice. Bernice's head in a burlap sack. You know, the old school. The yeah, old like, school. Got your sacks. onions, got your potatoes, yeah. got your, your decapitated woman head. Yeah. 
Bird yeah. sex for everything. <laughs> and then also had uh, Bernice's heart in a plastic bag in front of Ed's pot-bellied stove. Oh, so he was going to eat the heart. Yeah, he was about to eat the heart. That's... And he's probably at the grocery store getting ingredients, honestly. That's mm, like yeah, seasoning. Some, some kidney beans. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So fucking gross. And then Mary, um, they specified this woman's name. Uh, Mary, this is his second victim that he killed. That's oh. why they specified the name. Mary Hogan. Oh, God. That's making my sick, me sick to my stomach. <laughs> reading this shit again. Mary Hogan's face in a paper bag and skull in a box. He skinned her face and put it in a fucking bag. And put Delicious. her skull in a box. To, for later, I guess. And also had... Uh, if I can read this, my handwriting is so god-awful. Uh, oh. she uh, They specified her name because he was the, she was the second victim of him. Uh, she was the owner of a tavern that he would go to. Like a, oh. a bar. Forgot okay. to say that earlier. My bad. Uh, now, when caught, he admitted to stealing from nine graves. So nine different graves. Gotta, uh, gotta get all them nipples for the belt. God. It's like badges of honor. It's, it's soon after his mother passed is when he started to make a woman's suit to become his mother. So you did call it. So the corset, the leggings, the face. They had something that reminded him of his mother. Yeah. And it, he had to have it to make his mother Voltron suit. Oh, God. That's one way to look at it. Oh, fuck. These are really hurting my stomach. Jeez, I could only, uh. I could only feel for the police officers that were there. I couldn't do it. I, I would walk had... in there and I had to walk out. I couldn't do I, it. I uh, imagine one of them puked at least. Oh, I think half a dozen of them did. You know, you know they had imagine to sit being the person that did they just burn the house? Or did, no, they have to keep that as evidence, don't they? Yeah, uh, I'll get, get onto that it? later. Ugh. Also, he has said that he did not have sex with any of the dead bodies. Are the people that he killed? Okay, one saving grace. He's on record saying this though, with the bodies because they smelled bad. There's a reason why he didn't do that. So uh, at least he has some class, you know. Yeah, he ain't gonna he ain't gonna mess around with no stanky hoe. <laughs> oh god. Oh fucking hell. During questioning, questioning, he would bang his head against a brick wall, you know, because uh, I mean, he's what what else crazy. is he? Gonna do? He's fucking insane. Uh, di- <laughs> during his trial, uh, it was held without jury. Jury, jury, How do you without jury, jury. Uh, ruled not guilty due to insanity. So he's. When did he die? Please tell uh, me he yeah. died. Hold on, hold on. And put he was put into Central State Hospital for the criminally insane. November fourteenth, nineteen sixty eight, is whenever he was in there. He died in Mendo Mendota. Mental Health Institute, Madison, Wisconsin, July 26th, 1984, due to heart failure caused by cancer, buried in Plainfield. So I mean, don't think he should be allowed to be buried in Plainfield. Yeah, burn him and toss him in the dumpster. Yeah, and like, yeah. Oh. like he's fucking... <laughs> mine, mine had a longer rap sheet, but uh, you're... Technically, if you count the dead as victims, yours had eleven victims. Mine had yeah. ten. I, I would count the the deceased because I mean, you let him rest in peace, and he yeah. disturbed that rest very heavily, really heavily. Um, anyway, to get on to the next, uh, his farm and his land. Oh, he sold. Uh, I forgot to mention this. He sold uh, before he, he uh, was arrested. Sold about like twenty acres of that land. It was Henry's, mm-hmm. his older brother's, um, before he was caught to like you know get money for keep the farm and shit to to keep the skin suit lotioned. I fucking don't know. I what, what do you think he used? Vaseline, some name brand shit. Was he sponsored? <laughs> you think he was sponsored? No. All right. Uh, but the the farm land and the house. Was both auctioned off and now it's a tourist att- attraction. Um, it's inspired many films, like countless, like a shit ton. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, uh, my stomach does hurt. 
It's uh, it's pretty uh, pretty hard to swallow. I could I could only imagine the initial reaction. Yeah, I would. The initial horror of seeing something like that. Because he had all this shit just like in plain view. Yeah, the lamp would be very freaky. Yeah, it it had the face like stretched out. Yeah, and like whenever you lit it on, it was. I saw pictures online. Oh, and they had pictures. Oh no. Well, you know, I couldn't help but see it because the words were right next to it. Yeah. You know? uh, now, that's insane. The BTK, that dude's insane. Narcissism and uh, holy devotion to mother. Yes. And two fairy tales. Well, no, they're not. They're not, not fairy two tales scary at all. tales. Two scary tales. tales of two men that are uh, notorious. Where we're the, grateful the that they're behind done. bars. Yeah. Grateful. Uh, mine's still alive. He's just in prison. Thank God mine's dead. Yes. Uh, so, that's been... I think that's been all. So our next episode, to lighten everything up, we're done here. <laughs> but, like, I just <laughs> had to get, I have to get Ed Gein's shit out of my head. Uh, I, I just relived that twice today. Alright, so... And I gotta relive it again. Because I gotta edit this. I just realized that. Oh, boy. Have fun with that. Okay. That's not gonna go so well for me. <laughs> and now... Our next uh, topic, it's not really a topic, it's like random, talking about how we're doing, uh, what's going on in our lives as a little update. Just rambling. And I've came up with a name, Keith. Oh, you you have come up with a name for the rambling sessions? Yes, uh, Couch Talk. Couch Talk. Couch Lock, Couch Talk. Couch Lock, Couch Talk. Couch Lock, Couch Talk. I love it. All right. Now, okay, thank you for watching. Happy birthday to everybody. His birthday is today. Whatever. Yes. Happy birthday to you. And, and we to love you. you. And to you. Have good a, night. Good night. <laughs>